good evening everyone in the last class we understood what is ide and how to develop the program by using ide so can you tell me what is ide ide stands for integrated development environment by using ide we can develop our programs we can execute the programs also by using ide what are the advantages are there if we develop the project by using ide within the less time we can write more code within less time we can write more code and auto compilation available auto suggestions available and some shortcuts also available to write the more code in the less time are you guys able to use the ide working for everybody any problems have you gone through shortcuts shortcuts video can you tell me some shortcuts control d to remove the particular line control m minimize and maximize control shift f format the code to format the code control shift o auto imports control space suggestions will come and intelligence also is available for the ides to suggest the methods and classes and uh, one more thing is control shift f formatting control shift x y to convert the data to upper case or lower case shortcuts are available control o to display all the methods of the class like that there are some shortcuts available by using those shortcuts we can do more work in the less time our development will be faster if we go for ides there are some free ides available and there are some paid ides are also available free ides available paid ids available we can use eclipse or spring tool suit or intellij also eclipse sts both are almost same right intellij is a little different ide and it is a commercial ide trial version one month they are giving free after that we need to purchase the license for intellij so which ide we need to use for our development that's up to you either you can go with eclipse or you can go with the tool suit or you can go with intellij so it's up to you in the company also nobody will force you to use only particular ide it is your choice which one you want you can use that ide to write the programs all right so if you write the programs by using ide directly it will tell you is there any compilation error directly it will tell is there any compilation error and to execute the program also in built console available in the ide you no need to go for command prompt compile run manual you not required ide will take care of that stuff nobody will develop a project without ide in the company in every company every developer will work with ides only for a front end development people will prefer vs code ide for back end development eclipse tool suit or intellij ides are available good perfect so next the most most important chapter that is oops right next 10 days next 10 days we are going to work on this oops concepts only today i can see more strength because of oops huh? today full attendance i think so ha huh? mujhe full attendance dikha raha hai aaj class pe offline mein online to nahi dikh raha right good let's get started with uh, the most important chapter for a few people the most confusing chapter for a few people the most difficult chapter so that is oops without understanding oops you cannot develop a project without understanding the oops you cannot develop a project oops are very 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 important so java is an object oriented programming language java is called as object oriented programming language because java supports oops java supports oops 
oops not only in the java in every programming language oops are available if you go for dotnet oops will be available if you go for python oops will be available if you go for php also oops will be available oops is not specific to only java java is supporting for oops python supporting for oops right java is object oriented programming language because java supporting for oops concepts java supporting for oops concepts in every project we will use oops concepts to write our code as part of our development we are going to work with oops concepts what is what are those oops concepts how to work with oops that we are going to learn in the next one week to 10 days of time minimum to minimum 10 din to lagega so we are going to spend enough amount of time to understand oops once you are able to understand the oops then 50% of our java is completed the remaining 20% is there with the collections then remaining small small topics exception handling multi threading io operations generics annotations small small topics are available perfect guys good let's get started here programming languages are divided into two types programming like we are working with java c is also one programming language c++ also one programming language we can divide programming languages are divided into two types divided into two types first one is procedural oriented programming languages procedural oriented programming languages second one object oriented programming languages procedural procedure oriented programming languages procedure oriented programming languages and the second one is object oriented programming languages now procedural oriented in procedural oriented programs we will use functions and procedures so if you want to develop one application by using procedural oriented programming language like c cobol pascal those are called as procedural oriented programming languages c language comes under procedure oriented c language cobol pascal etc legacy old programming languages c language cobol and pascal these languages are comes under procedure oriented programming languages comes to object oriented object oriented java java c sharp python etc dot c sharp nothing but a dot net only right these languages comes under object oriented programming languages now if we develop the application by using procedural oriented programming languages what are the drawbacks available why people are going for object oriented programming languages are you guys getting my point programming languages are divided into how many types now they are divided into two types first one is procedure oriented programming language second one is object oriented programming language in the procedure oriented programming language c available cobol available and pascal is also available now in the object oriented programming language java available c sharp available python php etc there are so many languages are available which are called as object oriented programming languages first of all what is this oops oops stands for object oriented programming system what is that object oriented programming system now any programming language oops contains set of principles we'll come to that procedural oriented programming languages and object oriented programming languages are available so in procedural oriented in procedure oriented programming languages programming languages we will develop functions and 
procedures to develop one application by using procedure oriented languages we need to develop functions and procedures if functionality is increasing then number of functions also will increase if i want to develop more functionality that functionality i will develop as a function any logic that you want to write that logic you are going to write as a function or as a procedure so now if if we are if we are developing if we are adding if we want to add if we want to add more functionality if we want to add more functionality then we need to develop we need to develop more functions we need to develop more functions in procedure oriented programming language in pop i call it as a pop procedure oriented programming language in pop data is data is not data is exposed data is exposed globally whatever the data that we are using in our application that the data will be exposed globally in pop in pop there is no security there is no security our data data is most important in any application application means what data users data will be available customers data will be available our information will be available lot of data will be available application means holding the data presenting the data taking the data giving the data taking the data storing the data modifying the data giving the data to manipulate that data only to manage that data only we are developing our applications so if i develop any application by using pop the data is exposed the data is exposed there is no security for our data when you go for pop there is no security for our data if we want to add more functionalities then we need to develop more functions more functions maintaining and managing maintaining and managing more functions maintaining and managing more functions is difficult task how many functions you create all those functions i have to monitor i have to manage i have to maintain that the maintenance will become very difficult if you are keep on writing new functions if you are keep on writing the new functions the maintenance will become more difficult simple example now there are 60 to 70 people are available in the offline if 200 people comes can we handle in this room so it is it is going to become difficult so if strength is increasing maintenance will become difficult if strength is increasing maintenance will become difficult similarly i have an application in that application if i want to add new functionality is voice not audible audible if i want to add more functionality then i need to develop more functions if i develop more functions what is the problem maintenance is the problem my data is exposing my data is available for everybody my data is exposing there is no security there is no security maintenance wise it is difficult security wise not recommended not recommended everything i need to represent in the form of functions and procedures 10 years back 15 years not 10 years 15 20 years back people used to develop the projects by using pop languages nothing but procedural oriented programming languages c language cobol pascal fortran like that there are there are so many languages available which are called as procedural oriented programming languages in this generation at this moment is it recommended to develop a project using pop languages is it recommended to develop a project using pop language not recommended why it is not recommended what why it is not recommended i need to develop everything as a function if i am adding new functionality new functions will come managing the functions is very difficult and the data is the most important in the application that the data is exposing 
the data is exposing so security will not be available for my data so that is the reason people started following object oriented programming languages now if we want to develop a project if we want to if we want to develop a project using oop language using oop language then we will then we have to use classes and objects when you go for pop language pop pop procedure oriented programming language then functions will be available procedures will be available when you go for oop languages object oriented programming languages then classes will be available and objects will be available so here oop language any language any language which follows any language which follows oops principles any language which follows oops principles is called as oop language is called as oop language oop is not specific to java not specific to dot net not specific to python oops nothing but set of principles set of rules any programming language can follow oops rules if the programming language is following oops principles then that programming language is called as object oriented programming language then that language is called as object oriented programming language when i can say one programming language is a oop language if that language is following the oops principles then i can say that as a object oriented programming language are you guys getting my point how many types of languages are available there are two types of languages available one is object oriented programming language second one procedural oriented programming language in procedural oriented programming language functions will be available procedures will be available in object oriented programming language classes will be available objects will be available in object oriented programming language data is very secured data is very secured we can achieve security for our data in the object oriented programming language oop provides oops principles object oriented languages object oriented languages supports security for our data whereas in the pop language that security is not available in the oop language security is available the main advantage of the oops is code reusability what is the main advantage the main the main advantage of oop language or oops is code reusability what is the meaning of code reusability existing code can be reused in the different place so i have a web application the code which is available in the first web page i can reuse that code in the second web page also we can achieve code reusability when we go for oops concept the main reason the main advantage of going for the oops is first one is security second one is code reusability whatever now there are 10 developers available in the project the code which is developed by one developer can be reused by another developer in the same project are you guys getting my point now let us take a simple example let us take a simple example so now this developer is working on this developer is working on login functionality this developer is working on login functionality login screen development is doing this developer is working on for registration functionality this developer is working on registration functionality registration functionality you have seen na sign up sign in will be available yes one developer is working on login functionality another developer working on 
registration functionality. The person who developing registration functionality, he developed some logic for password encryption and decryption. Password security purpose. Password encryption and password decryption logic implemented. Logic implemented. When we sign up, our password will not be stored in the database as it is. If I store the password as it is, developers can see your password. If I am working for SBI project, can I see your SBI net banking password in the database? I cannot. Company will not support for that. Whatever the customer data is available, customer data will be encrypted. That means your data will be converted into unreadable format. Developer also cannot see our data. The developer who developed our application, our application will store the data into database. That a developer also who can have the access for the database cannot read your data. Why? Because your data will be secured by using encryption. To encrypt the password, first develop, second developer, this is developer 2 and this is developer 1. Developer 2 working on registration functionality, developer 1 working on login functionality. As part of the registration functionality, developer 2 implemented password encryption and decryption logic, 10 lines of code he has implemented. Same code, same encryption decryption required for this first developer also. Now, do you need to write the same code again or can I reuse that code? Can I, I can reuse that code. That means one developer code can be reused by another developer. Password encryption decryption required for the registration page. At the same time, that is also required. Here, we can reuse. We can reuse password encryption and decryption. We can reuse password encryption and decryption. Actually, that is a developed by developer 2. Developer 1 also wants the same code. So we no need to rewrite the same logic which is already available. We can reuse the logic. That is called reusability. Using the code which is developed by another developer. You are my team member. You developed one some code. That code, if I need, I can reuse it. I no need to redevelop again. I no need to redevelop again. That is one of the main advantage in the object-oriented programming languages. If you go for OOPS concept, code reusability will be available. Here we are not going to use functions. In the OOP, we are going to use classes and objects. Security also will be available. So OOP is specific to only Java? OOP is specific to only Java? No. OOPs are nothing but set of principles. Any language which is following those principles, any language which is following those principles is called as a OOP language. So today and tomorrow also, little, not little, most of the concepts are theory. People are sleeping. Evanda so gaya. First row, two people are sleeping. In the first row, two people are sleeping. By seeing them, I am also getting sleep. So, yeah, they got me. Maybe I will Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. What is AOP? Yeah, someone is asking what is AOP? AOP is a Android application. Huh? AOP nothing but aspect oriented programming that comes in the spring. In the spring framework, I will explain what is aspect oriented programming language. Okay. Currently, we will not discuss about AOP because we are learning core Java. Okay. Once we enter into spring framework now, then I will, I only, I will only teach you what is AOP, 
what is the aspected or aspect oriented programming that is not required now okay right can you tell me what are the advantages of going for oops first thing is our logic will be implemented by using classes and objects second advantage code is reusable third advantage security our data will be secure we can achieve the security okay with this we understood what is pop and what is oop pop nothing but procedure oriented programming language everything will be represented as a function or procedure if a functionality is increasing functions will increase that it will become more difficult to manage the functions and the data will be not secure we cannot secure our data in the oop languages so to overcome the problems of the pop oop came into picture object oriented programming language oop nothing but set of principles oop nothing but set of principle any language which follows oops principles is called as oop language java is object oriented programming language why java is called as object oriented programming language java supporting oops principles java supporting oops principles that's why java is called as object oriented programming language python also supporting oops principles then python is also called as python is also called as object oriented programming language there is a another language called currently it is not there in the market small talk there was a programming language called small talk that was the first programming language which supported oops or java came into market later point of time before java also there are some languages available which supports oops concept java is also supporting for oops that's why java is called taking the class in my home i am not getting this issue but here i am getting this issue yeah is it clear now guys is my voice clear now is it clear is it clear now is it clear now madam Yeah. 
yeah i think it is fine now is it fine now yes fine good so we are trying to understand advantages of the oops everything will be represented in the form of classes and objects so oops is not only specific to java any programming language which supports oops principles then it is called as object oriented programming language the main advantage of the oops it will support for security to secure our data it will provide the security for our data because data is the most important part in the application right another main advantage of the oops is code reusability another main advantage of that is code reusability now let's go for oops principles what are the oops principles available what are the oops principles available first one is encapsulation first one is encapsulation second one is inheritance encapsulation abstraction encapsulation abstraction and third one is polymorphism polymorphism and fourth one is inheritance ha ah. if you understand these four principles if you understand these four principles then we can say that we also know what is oops and how to work with the oops can you tell me what are the oops principles available encapsulation is available abstraction is available polymorphism and inheritance these four are called as oops principles any language which is supports these four principles that language is called as oop language our java supporting for these principles that's why java is called as object oriented programming language sir what are these four principles what is the purpose of that let's try to understand what is the first principle encapsulation 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 is used to combine is used to combine our variables and methods as single entity or single unit encapsulation is used to combine our variables and methods as single entity encapsulation provides encapsulation provides data hiding we can hide the data by using encapsulation we are going to write variables what is the purpose of variables variables are used to store the data what is the purpose of methods ah huh. methods are used to perform the operation data will be available in the variables methods will perform the operation thus variables and methods we can combine we can package as one unit that is called our class our class is the our class is the entity which contains variables and methods so here we can achieve encapsulation for our programs by using classes so why we are writing a class that means we are following encapsulation we are taking the variables and we are taking the methods those variables and the methods we are combining as a single entity right what is encapsulation encapsulation is used to combine our variables and methods as a single unit or entity encapsulation provides data hiding we can achieve encapsulation we can achieve encapsulation using classes using classes we can write a class name as a demo inside the class we can write our variables and we can write our methods now you see class is available inside the class 
I'm taking variables and I'm taking methods. Variables and methods are combined. Variables and methods are combined. So combined thing is called as one entity. So this is called encapsulation. Are we following encapsulation already? Yes, we are follow We are writing the classes now. Everything will be represented in the form of class and object. In the OOP, everything is a class and object. Class nothing but one entity where we are going to write our variables and methods. The process of combining variables and methods is called as encapsulation. How we are achieving encapsulation? Encapsulation we are achieving by using classes. We are achieving by using classes. So what is encapsulation? We understood what is encapsulation. Yes or no? Yeah. Can anyone tell me what is encapsulation? Encapsulation is used to combine our variables and methods as single entity or unit. Encapsulation provides data hiding. We can achieve encapsulation using classes. So we are going to write like this. Class, class name. Inside, this is the class starting point. This is the class ending point. So this is one entity. Inside this entity, we can write the variables and we can write the methods also. We can write the variables and we can write the methods. Right. Next one. Next one is abstraction. 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 What is the meaning of abstraction? Abstraction means, abstraction means hiding unnecessary data, hiding unnecessary data and providing only required data. So now here my laptop is available. My laptop is available. So now I am using my laptop. I am able to develop the program. I'm able to write on the notepad. I'm able to write on the notepad. I'm using paint also. I am using so many processes in my laptop. But do I know what is happening internally? How the RAM is working? How hard disk is working? How motherboard is working? How my keyboard is working in the background? Do I need that data? Do I need that data or I don't need that data? I don't need that data. What I need? I need one keyboard. I need one screen. That's it. If I have a keyboard, I can type it. If I have a screen, I can see what I am typing. So here, this laptop manufacturer following abstraction. Whatever the laptop I am using, whatever the laptops you are using, it is already a abstraction. They have developed so many things in the project. Laptop, nothing but it is a software. It is a project. It is a program. But are they providing you everything? Are they are providing only keyboard screen for visible visibility purpose? That means whatever the required information is available, we will provide only required information and we will hide unnecessary details from the user. That is called abstraction. What is the meaning of abstraction? Hiding unnecessary data and providing only required data that is called as abstraction. We can achieve abstraction by using interfaces and abstract classes. In the Java, they, we have classes. We are writing the class. In future, we are going to work with interfaces and abstract classes which are used to provide abstraction classes are providing encapsulation interfaces will provide abstraction abstraction means hiding unnecessary data and to provide the data only
Yes, today there is a problem with my wife. Sometimes it was struggling to me. क्या भाई क्या करना वाइट मैं गाइस इज इट क्लियर नाउ नाउ इट्स फाइन हा ओके समटाइम्स इट इज फाइन समटाइम्स इट इज गोइंग या टेल मी व्हाट इज एनकैप्सुलेशन एनकैप्सुलेशन मींस कंबाइनिंग द variables and the methods as a unit how can we achieve that encapsulation by using classes next one abstraction what is the meaning of abstraction hiding unnecessary details and providing only useful details how to achieve that abstraction by using interfaces and abstract classes okay now example car can i take a car as one example when i rotate my key engine is starting but do you know how that engine is starting how the fuel is passing to the engine internally do we know that do i need that i am i want to purchase one car if i go to car showroom will i check will i open the car and see how the fuel is going to the engine how the car is starting no i will just check car is starting or not that means i will check only the data which is required for me whatever the data which is not required for me i don't need that similarly as a programmer whenever we are developing the project whenever you are writing the code whatever the data it is not required to display we will hide that data whatever the data is required that only we will display how car is starting we don't bother about that how the bike is starting i don't bother about that now recently when the offline batch started i have taken this amplifier i have taken the speaker do i know how the amplifier working internally do i need to check that i will switch on i will check yes one or two working chalo start the class that means whatever is required sound is coming or not only that is important for me i paid 30000 for this after paying 30000 am i opening the box am i seeing what color of wire is available how the wires are connected do i need that no that means whatever the information which is required for me i will check only that the remaining details are not required for me i am not a electrician i am not a electrician similarly when we are developing the programs also we need to follow encapsulation and abstraction we need to combine our variables and our methods inside one class and we need to expose the data which is really required for the user we no need to expose everything we no need to expose everything so as part of our programming we need to follow encapsulation as well as we need to follow abstraction how to achieve encapsulation by using classes we can achieve encapsulation how to achieve abstraction by using interfaces and abstract classes we can achieve the abstraction example we will not bother we will not bother about how laptop is working how laptop working internally how laptop working internally we will not bother about we will not bother about how car engine starting internally we will just check laptop is working or not car engine is starting or not how they are working internally how the fuel is going how the power is going how many wires are there which wire is connected to which wire which color wire is available what is the weight of the motherboard i don't need all that stuff my laptop kaam kar raha nahi kar raha that's it if it is working i will use it if not working throw it out purchase another laptop if a car is working drive that if not working sell it out and purchase another car so here we need to check what is really required for you what is not required for you we need to hide that we need to hide that as part of the programming also we need to bother about security 
and we need to bother about abstraction. Security we can achieve by using encapsulation. Abstraction interfaces and abstract classes are available. Are you clear with my point? And the next one, polymorphism. What is the next one? Polymorphism. Polymorphism, nothing but polymorphism. Come on, any idea? I am the example for polymorphism. I am example for polymorphism. Now, when I come to the class, when I come to the class, I will act like a teacher. I will act like a, I will behave like a, not acting, it is, <laughs> I am behaving like a teacher. Okay? When I come inside the class, I will behave like a teacher. So here, what is my behavior? Teacher. I am teaching Java. Okay? I am a teacher. If I go to my office, uh, I, will, I will behave like an employee. Are you guys getting my point? Now, if I go to my office, take the laptop, hey, come here, I will tell you what is Java. Do I do, will I do that? No. If I go to my office, I will act like a employee. I will get the requirement from the client. I will develop the project. I will test the project. I will deploy the project. I will meet with my team. I will discuss project issues. I will assign the task to my team members. I will check what they are doing. What is the work status? I will check my email. I will check my email. I will check my manager. I will check with my manager. Is there any new requirement coming? So if I go to office, I will behave like a employee, right? If I come to institute, I will behave like a teacher. If I go to my home, huh, family member. If I go to my home, I will behave like a family member, right? So I am only one person. My name is Ashok. I'm only one. When Ashok comes to the class, he behaves like a teacher. When he go to office, he will behave like a employee. When I go for house, I will behave like a family member. Same person behaving in three ways depends on situation. Are you guys getting my point? I am one person physically and existing. You, you guys can see me, you guys can touch me. I am one object. Anything which is physically available, that is called as one object. Now, I am a person. I am a person. I am one object. I am a human. I am one object. I have multiple behaviors depends on the situation. I will exhibit. I will exhibit. I will express multiple behaviors based on the situation. That is called polymorphism. That is called polymorphism. Tomorrow, we are going to write our classes in the program, I mean in the project. We are going to write the classes. We are going to write the objects. Our object will exhibit multiple behaviors based on the situation. Here, I am one object. When I come to class, I am behaving like a teacher. When I go to my office, I will behave like an employee. When I go to my home, I will behave like a family member. That means one object exhibiting multiple behaviors depends upon the situation. So similarly, when we are working in our project also, classes will be available, objects will be available. Those objects will exhibit multiple behaviors based on the situation. Now, simple example, when I take 10 plus 20, what this plus is doing? It is adding 30, okay? When I say hi plus hello, when I say hi plus hello, is it doing the sum now? What it is doing now? It is concatenating. Can I say in the Java, plus is a polymorphic behavior? Plus is having polymorphic behavior? When I use the plus, for 10 plus 20, 
it is doing sum it is performing the sum operation it is adding the numbers but when i use the same plus for strings it is doing concatenation behavior is changed or not changed it's changed when i use the plus for the number it is performing the sum when i use the plus for the strings it is concatenating plus is the same but depends on the data type it is performing the operation can i say plus is having multiple behaviors yes or no plus is having multiple behaviors that is also one of the example for polymorphism what is the meaning of polymorphism exhibiting multiple behaviors exhibiting multiple exhibiting multiple behaviors based on situation is called as polymorphism exhibiting multiple behaviors based on situation is called as a polymorphism simple example what i am giving example 1 in below scenario in below scenario plus symbol having two different behaviors in the below scenario plus symbol having two different behaviors what are those here it is adding here here plus is adding now here here plus is concatenating here plus is concatenating concat concatenating okay adding plus concatenation this is example 1 when i go for example 2 i will take myself when i come to class i will behave like a teacher when i come to class i will behave like a teacher teacher or a trainer teacher or a trainer trainer teacher matlab lkg bachchan ke liye padhate hai na who is a teacher who is teacher man ha teacher means who teach one subject for the kids are you kid right no so i am not a teacher here i will call myself as a trainer okay when i come to class i will behave like a trainer when i go to office when i go to office i will behave like i will behave like a employee okay when i go to home when i go to home i will behave like a family member i will behave like a family member so polymorphism polymorphism nothing but many forms many behaviors based on the situation exhibiting multiple behaviors based on the situation is called as polymorphism now going forward going forward our objects will behave different ways depends upon the situation whenever we go for our coding part our development our methods will be available our objects will be available our object will exhibit multiple behaviors based on the situation our object will change its behavior depends on the situation there is a concept called method overloading method overriding still we did not understand what is method the next concept it will come it will come methods will come the method overloading will be available method overriding will be available at that time we will understand what is polymorphism now don't to try to understand complete oops now we are in the just trailer we are understanding the title what are the oops principles iska purpose kya hai what is the purpose of that principle encapsulation means combining abstraction means hide unnecessary data provide only useful data polymorphism means exhibit multiple behaviors based on the situation that's it our program our object our method will exhibit multiple behaviors based on the situation are you clear yes 
next one inheritance the next one is inheritance inheritance means using one class of properties in the another class that is called reusability reusability simple you have parents your parents having money your father is doing a job or your mother is doing a job they are earning some money are you using their money yes or no that means you are using your parents properties your parents are having some properties you are using your parents properties that is called reusability that is called reusability you have to simply to understand the oops compare the oops with your human life compare the oops with the human life then it is easy to understand and you will remember for long time are abstraction that means unnecessary details i will not show only useful details i will show you am i showing my six pack here is it required is it really required no you just need to see my face that's it because you just need to listen to the class so i am doing abstraction i'm doing abstraction i'm just showing my face i'm talking you are listening you need just a subject that's it right so i am doing abstraction and i am having polymorphism also i am behaving like a trainer here if i get out from this institute i will act like a normal human being i will act like a normal human being if i meet my friends pura behavior change ho jata na my behavior will be changed completely when i meet my friends when i meet my office friends when i meet my school friends college friends daru pite chutta marte kuch kuch karte na bhai aisa no if you go to your friends you will you will you will enjoy with your friends you will enjoy with your friends when i go to my office i will behave like a professional when i go to my office i will behave like a professional when i meet my friends that professionality will not that professionalism will not be available when i meet my college friends or school friends na professionalism will not be available because we are friends from long back they know my positives and negatives <laughs> yes or no yes when that person know my positives and negatives will i show my professionalism bhai band karo mujhe pata hai bhai band karo mujhe pata hai you no need to show that professionalism in front of our friends because bachpan se dost usko sab pata hai right but when i go to my office my colleagues will know me as a java developer that's it my colleagues don't know anything about me my colleagues know my name my skill set that's it when i go meet my colleagues i will show professionalism because they don't know anything about me when i go to my fam my home normal because my family members will be there mother father wife and all will be there i will act like a normal human being there so that means based on the situation my behavior is changing polymorphism polymorphism are you guys getting my point right encapsulation encapsulation means hiding all the details hiding all the details combining my behavior i mean combining the data and actions that means whatever i am telling you i have to do that as a human being what i will tell you i will do that simple example i will tell you tomorrow morning the, tomorrow morning we have a class when i say that there is a class tomorrow i have to take it so my data whatever i am telling you according to that i have to work my data and my methods data operation when i tell something when i give some data there will be some operation on that you just need to compare oops with your human life then it will become easy oops are not difficult our people made it difficult actual oops are not difficult they are easy but some trainers are making it difficult because they don't know how to teach the oops are you guys getting my point now can you remember what is encapsulation what is encapsulation combining the data what is abstraction 
hiding the unnecessary data, provide the data which is useful. What is the polymorphism? Exhibiting multiple, acting according to situation, behaving according to situation is called as polymorphism. What is inheritance? Reuse, reuse. Katam, oops, katam ho gaya. Completed or not? Huh? Oops, completed. Are you able to tell me what is OOP principle now? Theoretically, yeah, within 20 minutes, you are able to teach me what is OOPs. Now, if we work on the 10 days for that, you will become master on the OOPs. It is not a difficult. The thing is, the trainer should teach in the right direction. Trainer should simplify the subject. Then only students will understand it. Okay. If the trainer complicate complicated, people will not get that concept. So trainer responsibility, when people will love the trainer, like the trainer, when trainer is simplifying the subject, when the trainer is simplifying the subject, then people will understand that easily, people will like that trainer. Are you guys getting my point? So why Ashwakanti became this much popular within two years? Because our trainers are simplifying the subject. So what people want, we are giving only that. What people needs, we are giving only that in the simple manner. In the simple manner, right? So when we are teaching, we are playing some jokes. Why? People should not feel it bore. People should not feel that concept as boring concept. So in middle, I will play some jokes. It is the technique of teaching. Understand my point? So it is the technique of teaching. When I play some joke, simple, I know that. For every 40 minutes, our mind will be diverted. As a human being, we can't concentrate on the same thing continuously for one hour. After 40 minutes, we will get sleep or our brain will feel stress. Then your mind will be diverted. Your body will present, your mind will be absent. If you sit in the class for three hours also, after 40 minutes, whatever I am teaching will not go to your brain. If I am teaching continuously, that's why what I will do for every 20 minutes, two to three minutes, I will not talk about subject. I will talk about non-subject topic. Then your brains will become active. Hurry, Sari is teaching something. Then, then you will come back to this area. Your mind will come to this area. Just two minutes, I will divert your mind. Then your brain will become active. Again, I will start subject now you will listen for next 40 minutes this is the technique that we are going to follow are you guys getting my point right yes now inheritance what is the meaning of inheritance extending the properties from uh -huh. teaching is also a art yes right extending the properties from one class to another class is called as inheritance extending the properties from one class to another class is called as inheritance that means whatever the properties whatever the methods which are available in one class we can reuse that in the another class also how to achieve that reusability by using inheritance by using inheritance here i told you one developer implemented the logic for password encryption and decryption. How another developer can use that logic? Inheritance. Are you guys getting my point? Reusing the properties of one class in the another class is called as inheritance. Is called as inheritance. All right. Inheritance. Extending the properties from one class to another class is called as inheritance what is the simple example for this we are inheriting the properties from our parents suppose your father having some land by default you will get that land right your father is having some house you will get the some that house so whatever the properties are there for your parents those properties will come to chains so parent and child so when you go for inheritance, parent and child relation will be available. From one class, we can extend the properties to another class. 
one class can extend the properties from another class that is called as inheritance we are inheriting the properties child will inherit child will inherit properties from parent are you guys getting my point child will inherit the properties from parent so that is called as inheritance reusability the main agenda of the inheritance is code reusability okay the main aim of inheritance is the main aim of inheritance is code reusability the main aim of the inheritance is code reusability java supports inheritance java supports polymorphism java supports abstraction java supports encapsulation that's why java is called as object oriented programming language not only java dotnet also will support python also will support php also will support there are so many languages available in the market which is supports these principles the languages which are supporting for these principles are called as object oriented programming languages languages are divided into two types procedure oriented language object oriented language c is a pop language java is a oop language in the c language everything is a function in the java everything is a class and object in the c language data security will not be available in the java security will be available c language will not support oops principles java supports oops principles any language which is supporting oops principle is called as oop language what are the oops principles available four principles available first one encapsulation second one abstraction third one polymorphism fourth one inheritance what is the meaning of inheritance inheriting the properties from one class to another class is called as inheritance what is the main aim of the inheritance reusability one class properties we can reuse in the another class best example parent properties child will get parent properties will be available for child also parent class properties will be available for child class that is called inheritance what is polymorphism performing multiple ways or i mean exhibiting multiple behaviors is called as polymorphism best example human being when human meet their friends he will do one behavior when he meet the colleagues he will do one behavior when you go to home he will do one behavior so one human is having multiple behavior based on the situation he will exhibit that behavior are you guys getting my point then what is abstraction hiding the unnecessary data and providing only useful data hiding unnecessary data and providing only useful data that is called abstraction how to achieve abstraction in interfaces and abstract classes are available interfaces and abstract classes available to achieve abstraction then encapsulation what is encapsulation combining the variables and the methods is called as encapsulation what is the main aim of the encapsulation security the main aim of the encapsulation is security we can achieve the encapsulation by using classes every class we are writing is a encapsulated class every class we are writing is a encapsulated class encapsulation for security abstraction for hiding polymorphism many behaviors inheritance reusability these four are the pillars of the oops four principles any language supports these four principles that is called as a oop language pop language is available oop language is available now we are learning oop language that means we need to represent everything in the form of classes and objects are you guys clear is it difficult no easy every point is easy read it i don't know why people are struggling for oops in the market it is easy it is easy yeah 
Read it, guys. Read the points now. Online people, is it easy? <laughs> is it easy? Add difficult. Please repeat, huh? Okay, I will do it. Yep. Guys, please read it. We are in the oops concepts now. We entered into oops, the most important topic in the any programming. Not only in Java, man. <laughs> if you go for Python also, what is the important concept? Oops. If you go for .NET, oops only. If you go for any programming language, the most important concept is the oops concept. Okay. Programming languages are divided into two types. One is procedure oriented. Second one is object oriented. Example for procedure oriented, C, COBOL, Pascal, etc. Object oriented means Java, C sharp, Python, etc. Can you read it? In procedure oriented programming languages, we will, in the procedure programming language, we will develop functions and procedures. If we want to add more functionalities, then we need to develop more functions. Maintaining and managing more functions is difficult. Difficult. Reusing the functions is also not possible there. In POP, data is exposed globally. So in POP, there is no security, right? If we want to develop a project using OOP language, then we have to use classes and objects. Any language which follows OOPs is called as OOP language. Object-oriented language supports security for our data. Object-oriented language provides, provides security for our data. The main advantage of OOPs is code reusability. What are the OOPs principles available? Four principles available. Encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, encapsulation. What is the meaning of encapsulation? Encapsulation is used to combine our variables and methods as single entity or unit. Encapsulation provides data hiding. We can achieve encapsulation using class. In Java, every class is a encapsulated class only. Data we are hiding in the class. Abstraction means hiding unnecessary data and providing only required data. We can achieve abstraction using interfaces and abstract classes. We will not bother about how the laptop working internally, how car is working internally. We just need that is working or not. That's it. Polymorphism. What is the meaning of polymorphism? Exhibiting multiple behaviors based on the situation is called as polymorphism. Now, in the scenario, if you see 10 plus 20, we are getting 30. Here, based on the data type, this is symbol changing the behavior. If, it, if those are numbers, it is performing the sum. If those are strings, it is performing the concatenation. Okay, so here, plus operator having polymorphism. It is exhibiting multiple behaviors based on the situation. Example two, human being. When I come to class, I have one behavior. When I go to office, I have one behavior. When I go to home, I have one behavior. I am only one, but I am having multiple behaviors based on the situation. That is called as polymorphism. Next one, inheritance. What is the meaning of inheritance? Extending the properties from one class to another class is called as inheritance. Child will inherit the properties from parent. Child will inherit the properties from parent. Guys, here in general, in the human life, forget about Java. Forget about Java. Your father is having two kids, right? You and your brother or your sister, whatever it is. You, your father having two children. Now, your father is having one crore property. Then what will happen? 
first fighting will happen between you and your brother yes or no that no that property will be divided right if your father is having your parents are having 1 crore property then two childs will get the properties that means two childs are inheriting the properties from the parent two childs are inheriting the properties from the parent that is in our general life in the human life in our human life our parents properties will be inherited by the child but in the java one child can inherit only from one parent in general that is there is slight difference is there for human life and inheritance basically parent properties will be inherited by the child but in the java directly one child cannot inherit from two parents one child cannot inherit from two parents that is illegal in the java java does not support for that java will support inheritance but one child should extend from only one parent that concept is called as multiple inheritance that concept is called as multiple inheritance java will not support multiple inheritance that's why some people will call java as a partially object oriented programming language are you guys getting my point java is a fully object oriented programming language java is a partially object oriented programming language java is a partially object oriented programming language why java is called as partial object oriented programming language java not supporting for multiple inheritance what is the meaning of a multiple inheritance one child cannot inherit the properties from two that is not possible that concept is called as multiple inheritance sir why it is not possible why java not supporting for that that we will discuss in the inheritance topic we just gave the introduction for inheritance we have to work with the inheritance practically programmatically we have to understand why java is not supporting for multiple inheritance practically we will understand that clear yes just revise the concept what we discussed oops is very important i gave time for revise not for talking to your friends just revise what we have learned so far ha ah. because of ambiguity you are right ikbal so to avoid the ambiguity problem java does not support for multiple inheritance in java one child cannot inherit properties from two parents they also don't yeah in java one child cannot inherit properties from two parents at a time java does not support multiple inheritance that we will talk about later are ah yeah. small talk ha uh -huh. ha huh? no they don't support they are only for desktop applications real life example of encapsulation ha huh? what i can give real example for encapsulation combine our variables and methods as single entity encapsulation provides data hiding 
human body we can say has encapsulated right medicine tablets capsule capsules anything which is combining tablet tablet we can call as the example for encapsulation we can achieve encapsulation using glasses tablet yes in that some drugs will be encapsulated and a tablet will be prepared that is a encapsulation example yeah tablet we can consider as a encapsulation multivitamin tablets okay yeah. mahesh reddy yes multiple multiple inheritance does not support directly yep we can achieve that by using in interfaces yes i agree with you we will discuss that <clears throat> okay fine guys are you clear with the basic introduction for oops yes now we need to start working with these oops concepts directly i am not going to implement oops first we need to understand classes we need to understand objects we need variables and methods so these topics are very 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 important now classes objects variables and methods once we complete these concepts then we can understand our actual oops concepts we can develop our programs by using oops concepts okay let's get started with a class what is class what is a class come on guys what is a class class is a keyword okay. yes last row bhai so gaya no yeah bolo what is class combination of variables and methods is called as a class correct good pravin what is class he gave same answer i want different answer what is a class class is group of objects ha huh? yeah class by you what is class collection of objects ah huh? here i have written a class where is the object here that is class only na where is the object object not available na what is class ha huh. in si simple ha huh. anyone what is class blueprint are reading the same answer what is class combination of variables and methods okay so let me tell you what is class class is a plan or model or template right what is a class class is a plan that means i want to develop a program to perform sum of two numbers so that means for that i need one plan i need one plan i want to perform sum of two numbers so i need two numbers as a variables to perform the sum i need to write some logic Lo logic i will write by using methods so to declare the variables to declare the methods i need one class so class nothing but a plan or a model 
or it is a template. So in the Java, everything will be represented as a class. Class is a plan or model or template. Class means one imagination. What is the meaning of the class? It is one imagination. Class is a imagination. Class is a plan or model or template. Some people will call class is a blueprint of object. So many people are telling class is a blueprint of object, but they don't know what is a blueprint. It is just a Google answer. What is a blueprint? It is a plan. It is a plan. Blueprint, nothing but it is a plan. Class is a plan or model or template. Class is a blueprint of object. Class is used to declare variables and methods. Class is used to declare variables and methods. Class is used to declare variables and methods. Once the class is created, we can create object for the class. So once we have the class, for that class, we can create a object. Object means anything which is exist physically, that is called as a object. Creating the object means allocating the memory to store the data. Creating the object means allocating the memory to store the data. Class is used to declare variables and methods. In the pro project means, project means collection of classes only. Project means collection of classes. I am developing one Java project. What is the meaning of that? I am developing Java classes. My, in my Java classes, variables will be available and methods will be available. I am combining my variables and methods into one class. Class is a plan. Class is a blueprint. Class is a imagination. Class is a imagination. Once a class is available, then we can create object for the class. Classes are not exist physically. Class is just one imagination. My class should contain these variables, these methods. That's it. In the JVM, everything will be represented as a object. Object nothing but physically it is existing. Okay. Now, project means collection of classes. For once a class is created, once a class is created, then we can create any number of any number of objects for class. We can create any number of objects for class. Just read the points. Class is a plan or model or template. Class is a blueprint of object. Class is used to declare variables and methods. Project means collection of classes. Once a class is created, then we can create any number of objects for the class. So to create a class, we will use a keyword called class only. So in order to create a class in the Java, there is a keyword called class. Class is a keyword which is used to create one Java class. Okay. So we know the keyword class keyword class keyword is used to create classes in Java. Class is a keyword which is used to create the classes in the Java. So what is the syntax to create the class? Class. Here I can give class name. Class name can be anything. Class and class name. Class name can be anything. Here we are going to write variables and we are going to write methods. The combination of the variables and methods is called as a class. Class is one plan. Everything will be represented as a class. Classes will not exist physically. We are just preparing a plan. 
that means what you want to do for that you will prepare a plan as a class project means collection of classes only how to create a class the class will be created by using a keyword called class keyword by using a keyword called class keyword once a class is created for that class you can create any number of objects are you guys getting my point once i have a class called demo for the demo class i will create the object one object two object three object four objects five object 100 objects also you can create thousand objects also you can create for the class once the class is available you can create any number of objects for the class are you guys getting my point right so with this we are good with what is class class is a plan some people will call it as a blueprint of the project it is used to declare the variables and method classes once a class is created then we can create any number of objects for a class any number of objects for a class class keyword class keyword is used to create classes in java classes are not exist physically classes will not exist physically classes will not exist physically they are just imagination imagination okay next let's go for object object anything which exists physically is called as a object what is object real world entity any real world entity any real world entity is called as object objects exist physically this is table one object i am one object this mouse one object this laptop one object this speaker mic one object because all these are existing physically we can see with our eyes and we can touch also right so real world entities are called as objects to create the objects classes are mandatory without object also class can be created but without class object cannot be created object means it is one entity that is one real world entity any real world entity is called as objects objects exist physically objects exist physically we cannot objects will be created for the classes objects will be created for the classes without classes we cannot create the objects that means if a plan is available then only we can create the object for that if the plan simple example you want to construct one house for that house construction what is required first plan is required so if you have the plan then only you can construct the house after house is constructed that is one object okay to create the object plan is required plan is called as a class so any real world entity is called as objects objects exist physically objects will be created for the classes without having the class without having the class we cannot create object so that means class is mandatory to create the objects class is mandatory to create objects object creation means memory allocation so what is the meaning of creating the object what is the meaning of object creation object creation means object creation means allocating memory in jvm where objects will be created in the compile time objects will be created in the run time objects will be created in the compile time objects will be created in the run time objects will be created in the run time so object creation means allocating memory in java new keyword new keyword is used to create the objects new keyword is used to create the objects 
ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएशन मींस अलोकेटिंग द मेमोरी नाउ हाउ टू क्रिएट ए ऑब्जेक्ट हियर यू विल यूज क्लास नेम क्लास नेम रेफरेंस वेरिएबल इज इक्वल टू न्यू क्लास नेम न्यू क्लास नेम सो क्लास नेम स्पेस रेफरेंस वेरिएबल इज इक्वल टू न्यू क्लास नेम सो दिस इज द सिंटैक्स फॉर क्रिएटिंग द ऑब्जेक्ट सो विदउट क्लास कैन आई क्रिएट द ऑब्जेक्ट विदउट विदउट क्लास कैन आई क्रिएट द ऑब्जेक्ट नो to create the classes objects are mandatory to create the classes objects are mandatory are you guys able to follow this yes new keyword is used to create the objects class name space reference variable is equal to new class name right so whenever we create the object memory will be allocated for example if you have the class name as a user user u1 is equal to new user user u1 is equal to new user so user is a class u1 is a variable that variable is holding user object now so objects will be created in the heap area where the objects will be created objects will be created in heap area objects will be created in the heap area what is the heap area come on guys what is the heap area heap area is a memory in the jvm which is used to store the objects so which keyword is used to create the objects new new keyword is used to create the objects what is the meaning of creating the object object creation nothing but allocating the memory so what is the difference between class and object what is the difference between class and object class is a plan class is a plan object is nothing but physical existing entity based on the class you will create the object based on the object you will create the class based on the class we are going to create the object class is mandatory to create the object object creation is optional object creation is optional if you have the class then you can create the object without having the class you cannot create the object class nothing but a imagination object nothing but a physical entity so class keyword is used to create the class new keyword is used to create the object once a class is available you can create any number of objects for the classes now user u1 is equal to new user similarly can i do like this user u2 is equal to new user yes that means i am creating two objects for the same class that means i am allocating memory two times i am allocating memory two times so class name variable is equal to new class name now this is a variable this is a data type can i say like that this is a variable this is a data type that means every class can be used as a data type in the string i have given that point in the notes also string is a class and string is a data type every java class can be used as a data type that means string also a class that's why we are using string as a data type are you guys getting my point yes okay let me take one simple example let me take one simple example yeah class user what is this guys class user inside this class i'm going to write one method public void main public static public static void main string arguments string arguments okay guys now here inside this method i want to create the object how to create the object 
user u1 is equal to new user user u1 is equal to new user let me save this here user dot java what i am doing now i am creating the object for the class okay let me go to this workspace yeah, from tomorrow i will use ide guys okay yeah java c user dot java what i have done now i have compiled my class dot class file is generated i want to run my program java space user am i getting any output why huh. i am not printing anything just i have created the class and inside that class i have a method in that method i have a code that is used to create the object so now objects will be created at the compile time objects will be created at the run time objects will be created by jvm in the run time compiler will create the object or jvm will create the object jvm will create the object objects will be created by jvm in the run time objects will be created by jvm in the run time objects will be created in the heap area now so whenever i have created a object like this user u1 is equal to new user what is the meaning of that i am creating one object okay so this is my heap area this is my heap area in this heap area i am creating one object i am creating one object so now that means i am allocating some memory i am creating a object i use which is used to allocate the memory now for this object there is a reference variable u1 is the reference variable which is allocated to this object u1 variable what is u1 u1 is a variable which is holding which is holding user class object which is holding user class object now here i have one more line of code user u2 is equal to new user user u2 is equal to new user what is the meaning of that memory will be allocated sir can i create two objects for the same class yes you can create any number of objects for the class u1 variable pointing to one object u2 variable is pointing to another object i have created two objects for the same class that means i have allocated memory in the jvm what i can do in this memory now i can store the data in this memory we can store the data our variables can they can be created and our variables can be stored in the objects that means data can be stored in the object object creation nothing but allocating the memory allocating the memory when the object is created jvm will assign some address for the object for every object unique address will be generated for every object unique address will be generated no two objects address will be same every object will have a different address every object will have a different address sir you are saying that jvm will create the object in the run time for object the address also will be allocated can we get that address can we see that address no jvm is not memory friendly so that means creating the object nothing but allocating the memory na jvm will not provide you memory level details jvm will not provide you memory level details now here when you create the object my program is running my program is running after some time after some time 
my program execution completed my program execution completed i am not using this object that will be called as unused object that will be called as a unused object now jvm is having one assistant in the java in the java jvm is available jvm is having one assistant that assistant name is garbage collector what is that guys garbage collector what is the duty of the garbage collector cleaning it is going to perform cleaning activities in the heap area it is going to perform cleaning activities in the heap area whatever the objects are created by the jvm once those objects are not using in the program then garbage collector is going to delete this unused objects from the jvm why memory we have simple example simple example in my movie i am having oh sorry in my laptop in my laptop i am having a movie you have taken a pen drive you copied the movie your pen drive is 4 gb space your pen drive is a 4 gb space my movie is 3 gb high quality hd 3 gb movie is there let's take bahubali movie is there you copied the movie into your pen drive then you pasted into your laptop and you watched that movie also completed then is there any use of keeping that movie in the pen drive no you already watched it now you are not going to watch once again you are not going to watch it once again you already watched it if you skip the movie as it is what is the problem memory is wasting you cannot copy another movie memory will be wasted you cannot copy the another movie now if you want to take the new movie if you want to take the new movie delete the old movie then space will be available then you can copy the new movie similarly in the jvm heap also some limit will be available for the memory if objects are keep on creating at some point of time memory will be completed na you are cre objects are keep on ex simple example web application 24 by 7 365 days project will be running so many users are going to access the web application can you imagine how many objects will be created thousands of objects lakhs of objects will be created if those objects are keep on creating if the, now simple example man if people are keep on coming space will be completed or not if people are keep on coming this room space will be completed if room space is full new person cannot come so similarly when the objects are keep on creating at some point of time heap memory also will be completed at some point of time heap memory also will be completed if heap memory completed can i create the new object if memory is available if i if memory is available then only object can be created if the memory is not available object cannot be created are you guys getting my point now is there any use of keeping unused objects completed now i don't need it now i don't need it that is called unused objects if you keep unused objects as it is what is the problem memory will be wasted memory will be wasted that's why in the java garbage collector is available which is used to perform cleaning activities in the heap area that means it will identify what are the objects available hey object are you used by are you getting used are you getting used if this is saying boss there is a u1 i'm i'm in the use somebody using me leave me somebody using me leave me it came here you two hey you two are you getting used no boss i am not using i'm nobody is using me then i will kill you J garbage collector will come like that garbage collector will come to the heap area it will ask first object hey first object do you have any reference are you using by someone are you using by someone yes boss i am using by someone okay i will leave you 
go to you two hey you two are you using by someone no boss nobody using me then aapka khatam i will kill you i will kill you i will remove you that means the objects which are using by any variable or anyone those objects will remain same if objects are not using then garbage collector will delete the object from the heap area that is called cleaning activity jvm is responsible for allocating the memory garbage collector is used to deallocate the memory that is called inbuilt memory management in the java java is a robust programming language why it is taking care of the memory management as a programmer you no need to allocate the memory you no need to deallocate the memory memory management is completely taken care by jvm jvm will allocate the memory jvm assistant will deallocate the memory what is the name of jvm assistant garbage collector what is the responsibility of the garbage collector it is used to remove unused objects from the heap area are you guys getting my point so who is taking care of memory management in the java programmer is taking care or jvm is taking care of that jvm is taking care of the memory management as jvm is taking care of the memory management memory issues will not come in the jvm sometimes memory issues also may come when if your heap area is full if your heap area is full then out of memory problems will come when we will get out of memory problem sufficient memory is not available in the jvm to create the objects if a garbage collector is not coming then memory will be wasted that garbage collector is the jvm assistant that garbage collector will not take our instructions you cannot start the garbage collector you cannot ask hey bhai a jao clean karo e nahi karega that garbage collector will not listen to us garbage collector is completely managed by jvm you cannot control the garbage collector in the java because it is completely dedicated to jvm it will be completely managed by jvm only jvm only simple example here now in our office also in the institute also sweeper is available to perform the cleaning activity to perform the cleaning activity sweeper is available now 8 o'clock class is completed i will call her hey sweeper please come now you have to clean the room when i call her will she come immediately will she come immediately she will tell sir morning already i came i will come tomorrow i will not come now that depends na if we have urgent work you have to come immediately because there is some urgent work it depends upon her decision whether she comes or she will not come that it totally depends on her decision similarly in the java also garbage collector is there you can call it but there is no guarantee wo aayega na aayega we can't control that so garbage collector will completely managed by jvm programmer cannot manage the garbage collector that is the point understand sir why we can't call there is a reason in the garbage collection i will tell you why java people made garbage collector like that there is important reason that's why jvm only will manage the garbage collector programmer cannot manage the garbage collector but definitely garbage collector is available which is responsible to perform memory clean up activities in the jvm jvm will allocate the memory garbage collector will deallocate the memory when this memory is deallocated this space can be used by new object we can reuse that memory we can reuse that memory so garbage collection topic is available at that time we will understand internals of the garbage collector also as of now what is what is garbage collector garbage collector is used to remove unused objects from the heap 
कैन वी कंट्रोल द गार्बेज कलेक्टर कैन वी आस्क द गार्बेज कलेक्टर अभी क्लीन करो नो दट इज नॉट पॉसिबल इट विल बी कंप्लीटली मैनेज बाय ओनली जेवीएम ऑल राइट लेट मी राइट दैट पॉइंट ऑब्जेक्ट्स विल बी क्रिएटेड बाय जेवीएम इन द रन टाइम ऑब्जेक्ट्स विल बी क्रिएटेड इन द हीप एरिया इफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स आर नॉट यूजिंग इफ ऑब्जेक्ट इज नॉट यूजिंग नॉट यूजिंग देन देन गार्बेज कलेक्टर गार्बेज कलेक्टर will remove that object will remove that object from heap so what is that garbage collector garbage collector is responsible for memory clean up activities where it will do the clean up activity where it will do that garbage collector is responsible for memory clean up activities in jvm heap area only it will work in the heap area cool yeah read this what is object any real world entity is called as objects objects exist physically objects will be created for the classes object will be created based on the class objects will be created based on the classes without having the class we cannot create object class is mandatory to create objects object creation means allocating memory in jvm new keyword is used to create the objects so what is the syntax to create the object class name reference variable is equal to new class name user u1 is equal to new user that means one object created user u2 is equal to new user what is the meaning of that second object also created how many times memory allocated memory allocated two times objects will be created by whom objects will be created by jvm in the run time objects will be created in the heap area if object is not using then garbage collector will remove that object from heap garbage collector is responsible for memory clean up activities in jvm heap area so garbage collector will remove unused objects what objects garbage collector will remove guys used objects are unused objects only unused objects garbage collector will remove will remove unused objects from heap unused objects from heap area so now you got the clarity what is class and what is object yeah tell me guys what is class and what is object class is a plan which contains class variables and methods right yeah go go ahead what is class and what is object class is a plan or model class is a blueprint of object class is used to declare variables and methods project means collection of classes right once a class is created then we can create any number of objects for a class class keyword is used to create classes in java can i create a 10 classes also 100 classes also you can create classes will not exist physically what is object any real world entity is called as object objects exist physically objects will be created based on the classes without having the class we cannot create the object class is mandatory to create the object object creation means allocating the memory in the jvm which keyword is used to create the object new keyword is used to create the object class name variable is equal to new class name you can create any number of objects for one class objects will be created by jvm in the run time objects will be created in the heap area if object is not using then garbage collector will remove the object from the heap garbage collector is responsible for memory clean up activities in the heap area garbage collector will remove unused objects from heap who will manage the garbage collector 
garbage ah huh? can i manage i cannot gar i cannot java is not providing java did not provide that facility java did not provide that facility for us garbage collector will be managed will be managed and will be managed and controlled by jvm only programmers cannot manage the garbage collector programmers don't have control on the garbage collector programmer don't have control on the garbage collector so completely memory management will be taken care by garbage collector only memory management will be taken care by garbage collector only are you guys clear with this yeah any questions anyone yeah so today we discussed mainly about four points one is pop language second one is hoop language what is the class what is the object now tell me what is hoop language the language which is supporting for object oriented principles is called as a hoop language what is the main advantage of hoops code reusability and security code reusability and security hoops is specific to only java no any language support for hoops so the language which is supporting for the hoops is called as object oriented programming language what are the hoops principles available encapsulation abstraction polymorphism inheritance what is the meaning of encapsulation combining the variables and methods in the class is called encapsulation encapsulation main purpose is a data hiding class is the best example for the encapsulation real world example for encapsulation is a multivitamin tablet or we can call it tablet capsule is the encapsulation what is the abstraction hiding unnecessary data and showing providing only useful data is called as a abstraction how to achieve abstraction in the java by using interfaces and classes we can, by using interface and abstract classes we can achieve abstraction what is a polymorphism exhibiting multiple behaviors is called as a polymorphism in the java objects will have the polymorphic behavior one object can exhibit multiple behaviors based on the situation in in, in general in the real world human is a example for the polymorphic object next one is inheritance what is the meaning of inheritance what is the meaning of inheritance inheriting the properties from one class to another class is called inheritance what is the main aim of the inheritance code reusability is the main aim of the inheritance so now parent class will be available child class will be available one child can extend the properties from one parent in the java can one child extend properties from two parents no multi inheritance is not supported by java then we discussed about the class we discussed about the object what is the meaning of object creation allocating the memory is called as object creation good that's it i will upload these notes we'll meet in the tomorrow session don't miss a single class also for next 10 days oops are very interesting if you understand if you don't understand very confusing so don't miss the classes thank you we'll see you tomorrow